Hi, I'm Lindsay Bremer, and we are going to take that studio setup that I showed you above and turn it into a portrait of my daughter and her dog. I'm going to show you the composite and how I edit, how I begin in Lightroom, and then we'll pull it into Photoshop and composite it, and then do some editing. Okay, so I already imported these images into Lightroom and rated them. Um, so I'm going to pull up the ratings, and this is how I do that. This is how I narrow down the ones that I'm actually going to use. And then I begin by coming back in, and I really like this one, except I didn't like the dog very well. My daughter is too, is blocking him from the light right there. Um, and this one, he's lit a little bit better. This one's way better. Okay, so I like how the dog's lit, and I like how he's looking at me. And then, um, but I don't really like, my daughter was laughing, and I'd rather her have this face on the image. So I'm going to go in to develop. I'm going to pull down the highlights a little bit, and that's just going to drop down the highlighted areas that are a little bit blown out. I'm going to pop up the shadows just a bit because of this area right here between the two of them where I don't want to lose the details. Okay, um, I like to bump up the contrast just barely. And other than that, I don't really need to do anything to this image, which is one of the greatest things about shooting inside of a studio with lighting in a controlled environment. So then the image that I want to composite is this one. So I'm just going to click on the image that I just edited select both of them and then I'm going to sync them together and then that's going to make sure that they're all set the same which is another great thing about shooting in the studio is the lighting is exactly the same okay so now I'm going to pull them both into Photoshop and I edit in Photoshop, Photoshop CC 2015 One of the things that I lost, that I loved when I upgraded to 2015 was the oil paint feature. So I do sometimes use a plug-in, but I'm not going to do any of that with these images. Okay, so here they are. Cute. Um, so I really like how the dog looks in this one, and I feel like I can pull her over to the other one more easily than I could pull him. So I'm going to select the quick selection tool. And we're going to extract her. Command C and then paste it over here. Lower the opacity of her just so I can line her up with her other self. Command T to transform the image. And I really like to line the eyes up and find where those eyes line up. Okay, so now I have to mask her off with that mask tool right there. Get a paintbrush, a black paintbrush, at a soft 100%. And we're just going to paint off a little bit. Okay, now there I painted too much off here of the background. We'll just clone that. And then I painted too much off of my daughter here. Don't want to lose her so we can zoom in. Get 
get in really close and see what's going on. Flip back over to the black because I don't want that white background. Okay, I like, I'm liking how that looks. I'm going to click on and off and make sure there's nothing weird. Um, we really need to clone that right there, and that's about it. So let's flatten that image, get the clone stamp, use the brackets to make it larger or smaller. and make that go away. Okay, now let's do the cropping so we can get rid of the light and the weird floor. Okay, I like that. We have to fix this down here. Actually, I think it will be better if we clone that. I wish I had a little bit more of his paw, but he wasn't cooperating as well as I would have loved him to. Okay, then I'm going to select the foreground color that I want to use, and we're going to fade out that background right there with a gradient. So we'll go to gradient, linear, and bring it down this way. Perfect. Okay, then we're going to take that mask again and paint it off of these guys at 100%. And then I'm going to lower that opacity just a little bit so it doesn't look fake. Okay, I feel like that looks good. Flatten those images. And then um, I really love negative space, so I feel like these guys would look really cute right there in the corner. Then we have this background, because this was my background color, this pink. So we need to pull that out. And if you use your rectangular marquee, you can select the area, then edit, fill, content aware. And then it's going to take that content and fill the box where you need it to go. Same thing here, edit, fill, content aware. Okay, now that that's there, 
I can see this a little bit better and I want to edit that a little bit more of the crop because I am I love the rule of thirds and I love how that makes your eye feel so I'm gonna have these lines right where I want the eye to go and that's right at these two together in the corner of the picture filling up the lower the lower section Okay, I feel like that's cute. And now let's go in and we need to do some cleaning up. My daughter thought it would be fun to color markers all over herself this morning so that she could smell them. They're the Mr. Sketch skinny marker, smelly markers. And we need to get rid of that. So I created a new layer and then I got the paintbrush then you're going to option, get the color of her skin. And then I like the opacity up here to be lower, so I like it at about 30% when I'm doing um, anything with the skin. And then you just kind of paint over. There's some green and yellow in there. That was easy. Um, we're going to come in, same thing under her chin. She did that a little bit take that off and even kids have circles under their eyes in pictures it just magnifies everything so I like to come in and smooth that out a bit the light reflected a lot off of her nose so I'm gonna dim that down just barely she's looking pretty cute I'm going to take a clone stamp because she has a little piece of skin that flaked right there. So we're going to, let's zoom in so you can get a good look at what we're doing. Take that clone tool and get rid of that. Okay, cute. Crop. Okay, so we have that pink over there, and the crop isn't, I feel like, there. Okay, I'm super happy with that. Um, I have a total action palette full of actions from when I was first starting out, and now I just don't use them anymore, but they're still loaded in my Photoshop, so that's what that was. We can come in and I like to create a solid color here of a, a yeah, a little PG. And lower the opacity of that solid color. And then I'm going to erase it off of so there's a mask right here, and I'm going to mask it off of their eyes, their lips. Okay, then we're going to go in and bump up the contrast a bit. And then you can see I like to turn the layer on and off and you can see what it's done and it's just given it a little bit more of a contrasty feeling and I maybe did, maybe it was a little bit much so I can pull that opacity down. Okay, yeah, I like that better. Okay, then I'm going to come in with a another solid color and I like to go to this yeah, like mocha e color. And then I like to make that a soft light and then pull that way down and then erase it off of the background. So there's a mask there.
with the soft light, it shouldn't really be on the back, but I just like to be sure, maybe off of her feet a little bit. And that just kind of bumps up the shadows a little bit that I want to see in the dark spaces and gives the dog a really good color. See, it's just a little bit, but it makes all the difference. And that is it. That is how we got this cute little image in the studio. I'm going to save it, command save, and it'll just save straight to Lightroom. Okay, so I brought them up a little bit in the crop um, so that they filled up more of the frame because my daughter loves having prints in her room that have text in them so that she can show her friends. So I thought it would be cute to make this kind of like an announcement or just a, a little poster for her room. So you can add a text box and that text is too big. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to select like a dark, I really like this dark brown color because it brings out the that mocha that we added. Okay, then move that over with the move tool. Then you can make a new text box. And I just have a lot of free fonts that I've downloaded from like Font Space or Font Squirrel. And I'm just looking for more of a block font. Okay, then I want to go in and I want to transform that so it's longer. space in there. Okay, then I want to move it over and it's a little bit too big. So command T to transform that box. And then if you hold down the shift or you lock it with that paper clip, then it won't work. Okay, I think that's cute and she'll love it.